Jim in Metamora, one of the highly and one of the most highly anticipated regular season games in Metamora girls basketball history. It's your number six Metamora Redbirds and the number nine Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Hi everybody, Alex Dobb, happy to bring you the call of this one. Brad Marshall back on the camera as well. And it should be a very exciting matchup. An intriguing turn of events as this was a 45 point win for the Redbirds two years ago. But a lot has changed for the Irish program. Vastly improved. Only two players from that roster two years ago or even on this year's roster. Those being Molly Rickey and um, Lexi Gorham. Uh, but in terms of players to watch, you look at Molly Rickey, you look at Maya Wardle as probably your top two. Wardle, though, she's extremely talented, but she's also extremely turnover prone. So if the Redbirds can try and exploit that, could end up deciding the factor or being the deciding factor of the game. Before we get going too far, here's our pregame chat with head coach Kyle Wyaneth. All right, back here, pregame with head coach Kyle Wyaneth. And coach, you know, something that I was mentioning to PA announcer Charlie Dreyer before I came up here is two years ago, this series was Metamora winning by 45. Now it's number six versus number nine. This is probably one of the bigger regular season games in recent memory. Is there really any motivation for this team that you need for a game of this magnitude? You know, I, this is where uh, I think it helps. So we got so many girls that, that compete uh, across the spectrum of sports. They've been in big games before, whether it's basketball, softball, volleyball, cross country, golf, tennis, you name it. And, uh, you know, it, we, we're just looking at it as game number eight in our season. Uh, and we're trying to, to put our best foot forward out here in game number eight. And, uh, you know, Notre Dame uh, got a good team, good program going. Um, and we're just hoping uh, to, to have it be a fun game and a, a great atmosphere for our, our girls tonight. Obviously, you could talk about a couple different players. I think you got one of the players you got to start with is Maya Wardle, one of the best guards you could say in the Peoria area. H how do you try to go up against a player of that caliber? You know, uh, you're gonna you're gonna go up against some teams, and, and some of uh, some of your game plan is trying to limit what they do best. And then uh, at times, you know, you're gonna play uh, play against some players that uh, you know they're they're good and they're gonna make things happen on their own, regardless of what you're trying to do. She's one of those players that's gonna make it difficult on our defense. Uh, and so you know, collectively, uh, it's not like we're we're putting one person out there and saying, hey, you know, you gotta you got the task of doing this. Uh, we're gonna try to play good team defense, uh, just like we have all throughout the season. And uh, we're going to try to challenge her, uh, you know, as best we can. I think one of the bigger headlines in this game is you get Katie Ramage back after having to sit out the East Peoria game. What are you looking to get out of her in the first, you could say, marquee game of the season? You know, it, it, same thing we, we ask out of everybody. We don't, we don't try to put any, uh, any more on anybody's shoulders than, than everyone else. And when you take a look from top to bottom of the roster, you know, any given night, uh, you know, we've had some girls that have come in uh, and playing limited minutes and have almost led us in scoring. So, you know, we just ask her, just like we ask everybody else, uh, to give us best effort every night, uh, really buy in on the defensive end of things, and then uh, we kind of see where it goes from there. Obviously a little bit of a non-conference hiccup, you could say, in the, uh, in the middle start of the middle line I schedule. What, what I guess would be your top couple of keys to moving to 8-0 and keeping that win streak rolling? You know, I think uh, for us, uh, you know, defensively, uh, we've placed a, a pretty strong emphasis so far on, on how we want to try to play on that end of the floor. Uh, you know, and whether it's tonight, whether it's Thursday, you know, or, or, or whether it's next week and, and beyond, you know, we want, to be, uh, we want to be playing good defense. And, uh, you know, I think that's going to be a key tonight. You know, if we, can, if we can defend well, I think we'll give ourselves a chance. Well, Coach, good luck. Hopefully we're talking to you after a top 10 W. Let's go get it done. Thanks, Alex. Back here in Metamora, getting ready for tip off. Metamora and Notre Dame, number six and number nine in the Class 3A poll. And like I said, one of the bigger games in recent memory in program history, at least in terms of the regular season. And the best part about the, the way the season has played out is there's games with even bigger implications all of a week down the road with defending conference champ Dunlap coming to town on the 14th and number two ranked Morton coming to town on the 17th. So two dates to keep an eye out as we get towards the holiday season. But, I, you know, in terms of what to expect out of this game from the Redbirds, forget really how both of the last two games went, Bloomington and East Peoria, not just because this is a drastically different opponent, but just because 
I don't know if that was our best basketball. Either one. Definitely the Bloomington game. East Peoria, we at least didn't get off to the most stellar start in the world, but Bloomington was just flat out not our best basketball by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so we definitely need to play better ball than that. And like I said, this is probably, if they were to get it, probably, I would say it goes up there with the first time we beat Washington a couple years ago, um, or first time in a while that we had beaten Washington that happened a couple years ago. Um, that that's probably our biggest regular season win. But if we're able to get this win, this, I would say, skyrockets to the top. It will be interesting to see, you know, and I'm not saying the Irish aren't deserving of the number nine ranking. I only use this tone because they're one of the few teams in the area I haven't seen play yet. So I don't know what to expect. Um, I did talk to Coach Lane Langhoff, a name that might be familiar to a lot of Redbird fans, obviously. He's in his fifth season at Notre Dame, 58 and 53. But the extra familiarity with Redbird fans might be from his tenure at Canton, um, where he was the Canton Lady Giant coach before he came across the river and coaching Peoria Notre Dame. Um, so I was talking with him before the game and kind of asked him about that Peoria High game because he says, well, that's also probably our most reputable game on the schedule so far. Also probably the worst we've played. Um, he said they got out to, Peoria High got out to, I want to say like a 25-7 run or something like that, he said. And then they were up one at the start of the fourth quarter. So basically, let what happened against Peoria High in the first quarter happen, but keep the foot on the gas. Stomp it out and secure. I'm not saying it's going to be a dominant win. I'm not some future predicting expert, but keep the foot on the gas. If you are able to get off to that great start, do not slow down. Especially as talented as this Notre Dame roster is, that's probably the last thing you want to do if you want to stay undefeated and get your first top 10 win. We think potentially in program history. We mentioned Metamora sixth in the state has never been as high as sixth in the state poll. So this might be one of the higher ranked wins in program history. So even though we are the higher ranked team of the two. Teams are out on the court getting ready for introductions. Wait to see if they zero out the scoreboard as the best crowd of the season rises to its feet in preparation for the national anthem. Easily, right, Brad? Best crowd of the year we've had so far. The only one side of the bleachers out, but it's probably about 80 70, 80% full. You could argue 90% full on our side. All right, here's public address announcer Charlie Dreyer with the national anthem and pregame introductions.
job as always by Charlie on the starting lineups. And here we go. Brooklyn Marshall will jump for the Redbirds and Delaney Cook for Notre Dame. Ball is up and Redbirds win the opening tip and we're underway. Top 10 game from Tempke Gym. Ramage back in the lineup after having to sit out against these Peoria. Coach Wyna talking about that in the pregame. Pretty solid defensive set to start for the Irish. A lot of contact there from Ricky. Risky pass batted out by Wardle. Seven twenty-seven in the first quarter. Obviously, still looking for our first points. Nice drop pass underneath. Kayla almost loses control and does. Oh, but right to Katie Ramage, just maybe with a little too much velocity. Melissa drives right into the double team, but is fouled. Ooh, close call there. Foul comes in on number 15, Mary Breitbach. That's her first, team's first. And so a sideline inbound on the way for Russell. Oh, Marshall's wide open. A little late, but man, that would have worked out perfect if they got it to her when they did, or when they could have. One minute in. Russell. Hand off. Like I said, I'll say it again, pretty sound defense to start from Notre Dame. Can already tell them just by how they're setting up on that side of the ball that this is a much different team from two years ago. Ramage to no good, a rebound for Wardle. Here come the Irish, straight up is Marshall, no displacement, good no call. And here come the Redbirds. Wallman, Deere, and Wardle, that'll be a matchup to watch tonight. And Alyssa started to cut. Mistake there for the turnover. And we played about a minute and a half and neither team scored yet. So we'll see who's able to draw first blood tonight. Again, number six in the form of Metamora and number nine for Notre Dame. Maya Wardle to Delaney Cook. Cook drives past Marshall, a little bit of a hesitation move and rolls it in for two. Notre Dame takes the first lead of the game at two minutes in. Can't call her for a travel. She never had possession as Norm Ulrich properly calls. Norm Ulrich, speaking of which, was one of the officials for the triple overtime game against Dunlap last season, so hopefully he doesn't bring us another triple overtime game. Drop pass to Pesha underneath with contact, no good. And the defensive rebound for Daly. Driving is Wardle. Cook has it again, drives on Ramage, blocked by Pesha. Down goes Cook as well. Redbirds don't have numbers, but they still push it. Pesha driving, that might be a charge. No, and one. And one for Kayla Pesha. I didn't see foul is on 20, Biz Daly. That's her first team second. And a three point play attempt coming up for KP. Would give Metamore their first lead. A little less than three minutes into the ball game. It does. Kayla converts the three-point play. Three to two, Metamora on 5-13 to go in the first quarter. Maya Wardle, the sophomore, runs the point for the Irish. Ricky pushing off on Lalleman Deer, no call. Rebound for Metamora. Oh, that's a dangerous pass, yep. Turned over from no, or turned over to Notre Dame. Here comes Lalleman Deer, Cook. Shot fake on Ramage, no good. Easy rebound for Brooklyn Marshall. Got to get it away, they do. Three on three, slow it down. Unless you get that option, Brooklyn Marshall, no good, tips it to herself and saves it. Got to get some more movement out of the offensive side of the ball, turnover right to Maya Wardle. Pull up on Lalleman Deer is good. 
Four to three Irish, 424 in the first quarter. Russell for Lallman Deer trying to get past Wardle. Can't. Izzy Vandesrapp will sub in next dead ball. Crossover Lallman Deer. Put back for Kayla Pacia. 5-4, 401 in the first quarter. We'll have a mask timeout next dead ball. Maya Wardle, of course, as most of you probably know by now, the daughter of Bradley men's basketball coach Brian Wardle. His Braves, I believe, playing Toledo tonight. Mid-range jumper is a swish for Mary Breitbach. Irish take the lead right back, 6'5", 338 in the first. Lom and Deer being hacked by Wardle. Go up to Russell, who's being held by Breitbach. You gotta watch the contact. Lollum and Deer on Wardle. That'll be a fun matchup to watch all night tonight. Marshall to Lollum and Deer. Tough pass for Ramage. Flips it up and one. Redbirds with seven points. They could have as much as six on and ones if Katie converts this. Is Evan Schraff in for the Redbirds, replacing Brooklyn Marshall? So you have the and one converted earlier by Kayla Pesha. Katie Ramage will try to convert the second one, not even five minutes into the game. And she does. 7-6 Metamora. We'd be tied at six, or 8-6 Metamora rather. We'd be tied at six purely on and ones for Metamora. Wardle, don't give her space. Nothing but net. Maya Wardle makes it 9-8, 254 in the first. Page on the left post. Has Ramage. Running baseline. Ooh, dangerous pass. A little too high on that one. Alyssa couldn't get a grip on it. Elizabeth Hanley subs in for the Irish, and we have our first mask timeout at 2.46 in the first quarter. Irish nine, Redbirds eight, back after the mask timeout. Back here in Metamora, Alex Dobb with you coming out of the first quarter, mask timeout at 2.46 in the quarter. 9-8, Notre Dame the score. Maya Wardle left open for three for the latest Irish basket to give them said lead. Plenty of media in attendance. Kurt Pegler from Channel 31 barely gets off the floor before they inbound the ball. Um, Sarah Palczewski from 25 is here. Matt Dayhoff, one of the photographers at the Journal Star, is here as well. So that'll be cool to see the photo album they post online. They always do a good job with their sports photography. Wardle cut off by Van de Schraff. Nice hit in defense by Izzy, as well as Kayla there, who got to be careful bumping into her. And there we go. And we look out on that one, and yeah, that's a foul. Foul is on Molly Ricky. That's her first, team's fourth. And Caitlin Cassidy subs in for the Irish 5'11 freshman. Far baseline inbound for Russell. And Cassidy promptly off the bench, getting some action in there, hustling up for that tip out. Redbirds trying to retake the lead late first quarter. Dangerous pass. Two tip outs on the last two inbounds plays for Metamora. See if they can get a better result out of this one. They have the home run pass to Izzy. They go to Katie in the trap corner. Again that. Ballman Deer matchup up top. They'll, they've thrown Ricky and Wardle at her, switching on and off between her and Ramage at the perimeter so far. Katie drives, flips it up and in. 10 9, 145 in the first quarter. Metamora back in front. Wardle crossover. 
Crossover again. Screen from Cassidy. Nice defense by Alyssa. Pushes all the way back out to the volleyball line. And nice defense swatting it away from Maya Wardle. Out of bounds, it'll stay Irish ball. 1.30 in the first quarter, slim one point lead for Metamora. Oh, look at the post defense by Van de on Cassidy. Gotta be careful though, may end up being a foul if she's not careful enough with it. A good tip out there from the Redbirds. Giving Notre Dame a little bit of the short term taste of their own medicine after the last couple inbounds by the Redbirds. Inbound is to Wardle, has the baseline cut off. 120 in the quarter. Ooh, could have seen a cut. Ooh, Delaney Cook open middle of the lane, no good. Rebound Vandestraff. I was waiting for a back cut from Wardle on the right side there. They had it if she wanted it. Maybe just perhaps not in that set's cards. Pass is tipped away from Pesha. Here comes Cassidy. Kayla goes for the block, doesn't get it. Caitlin Cassidy with the bucket. 11-10, Notre Dame, 48 seconds in the quarter. Another dangerous pass. Got to be better with our passing. Kayla cross-court pass. Katie, corner three. Good! 13-11, Redbirds, 33 seconds in the first quarter. Wordle loves that crossover dribble. She drives right through the lane. Two rolls out, rebound, Lolleman Deer. Home run pass to Pesha. Wide open left post for two. 15-11, 15 seconds in the first quarter. See if they can get a big stop here at the end of the quarter. Wordle back to that crossover dribble. Over Russell, no good. Rebound blocked by Pesha. Big block from KP. What's Notre Dame complaining about? That's a good block. 15 and 21, Mary Breitbach and Lexi Gorham in for Notre Dame. 3.1 seconds for the Irish. Baseline inbound, Wardle. Open three, short rebound, Ramage and Redbirds lead after one. Three quarters remain, number six and number nine. It's your number six Redbirds in front, 15-11. All right, back here for the second quarter from Tepke Gym. That'll be Notre Dame Paul to begin the second quarter. Let's see who they send out here. See Caitlin Cassidy, Maya Wardle, Mary Breitbach, 32 is Elizabeth Hamley, and 21 is Alexi Gorham. Redbirds go with Alyssa Russell, Brooklyn Marshall, Katie Lolleman Deer, Izzy Vandeschraff and Katie Ramage. Up top is Hanley, the youngest of eight Hanley siblings. You might know that name, particularly on the voice. Redbirds want a five second closely guarded call. They don't get it. Lawman Deer, gotta be careful with that pass. Thankfully, she holds off on it. Back cut, Marshall. Two is too high. Rebound, Izzy rolls it in. Six point lead for Metamora, early quarter two. Kyle Wyneth, perhaps getting back to the vertical of his playing days, wanting that five second closely guarded call last possession. Former Monmouth College player, and of course, former Metamora Redbird. Corner three for the Irish, no good. Rebound, Marshall. Redbirds can get a fairly substantial lead here. Russell, and passes deflected, but here's Ramage open. Baseline drive, travel. Yep, yep, that's a travel. Kayla back in for us, and Delaney Cook subs in for Notre Dame. Mentioned the inexperience of Notre Dame, at least in terms of the last meeting against Metamora, Molly Ricky is the only one that even played against us two years ago. She did start, but only finished with a two, a foul, and two points. And uh, she's yet to score tonight, but she does have a foul to her name. 6.35 in the half. Nice defense, Katie gets the steal on Mary Breitbach. She might take it on her. Oh, doesn't get the shooter's roll, but she'll head to the line for two shots. 
Foul is on 15, Breitbach, her second, team's fifth. And maybe for one of the first times this season, we might be having a couple calls in our favor in terms of an actual fairly so good sized discrepancy so far. A couple of subs for Notre Dame don't appear to be new entries. All get, looks like three. Molly Ricky was one of them as Katie converts both free throws. Uh, 20, Biz Daly is the other one. Wardle quickly into the lane, kick out for Ricky. Strong, rebound Pacia. Redbirds can take a double figure lead with a two pointer. There's Marshall. Timeout, Irish. Part of the Redbird faithful on their feet as Brooklyn Marshall gives the Redbirds a 10 point lead on number nine. Thirty-second timeout called by Notre Dame here with 6-10 to go in the second quarter. And rightfully so gets this good Redbird crowd on its feet. I will say, and, it, and it's not like I'm being held against my will, you have to say something nice about the opponent. When Notre Dame made their jersey switch a couple years ago to the ones they have now, I think they're pretty slick. Now, if you want to go to the college level, Notre Dame, um, they have a white, white on white jersey, but the numbers and Notre Dame across the chest is in gold, which is a pretty cool look. Cook's pass is stolen by Kayla Pesha, one on one, drives in, lost control, never had a loss of possession, but she gets it in there somehow. 23 11, 543 in the first quarter. Wardle and one. Foul is on Izzy Van de Schraff. That's her first and Metamore's first of the game. Wardle will try to convert a three-point play. Alyssa Russell back in for Katie Ramage. And I did not see who went in for Notre Dame, but it seems like they've kept a pretty short rotation. And unless none of these or any of these are new entries, uh, let's see, they've used eight players so far. So that seems like a pretty average, ro average sized rotation. Wardle converts the three-point play. She now has eight. 23-14, Metamora still, or back down the single digits, I should say. Baseline cut for Russell. Oh, nice cut, Kayla! What a cut, what a pass. Kayla Pacia already in double figures with 11. It's 25-14. Here's Wardle on the other end, no good. Van de Schraff, dangerous overhead pass, but it works. Brooklyn Marshall. Hook shot rolls in. Four forty-five in the second quarter. Metamora up 13 on the number nine team in the state. Katie Ramage will sub in next dead ball. Cook for three, banked out, no good. Tipped Marshall to Lallemandier. Might have been bumped, but no worries, we got the ball. Lallemandier being bumped into by Wardle. Russell, kick out Van de Schraff. They have Pace on the baseline. Other than a couple rushed passes, the offense has been flowing. Well, you don't say, Alex. We're up 13. But just, I've just been really impressed early on with just how well the offense has flowed through the first quarter and a half. Russell, watch out. Three ball. Good! 30 to 14. Don't stop now, ladies. Wordle to Cassidy, push off, no call, blocked by Kayla. Clean goes back to Ricky, who lost the ball. Taken away by Katie Lolleman Deer. Middle of the lane, stopping and pulling back. Didn't have too many options there immediately, so did the right thing by letting it run out. 324 in the quarter. 
Um, and Deer, dangerous corner pass to Russell. Doesn't have the baseline. That's a lot of contact from Ricky. It's out of bounds off Notre Dame. Mask timeout here at 3.15 in the second quarter. Metamora with a comfortable 16-point lead on Notre Dame, but the amount of time left, not so comfortable. Still plenty of basketball left to be played. Redbirds got to keep the foot on the gas. Back with more of the second quarter. Alex Stop back with you at Tepke Gym. Redbirds on a 15-3 run to start the second quarter, and that equates out to a 16-point lead, and that's something that Coach Lane Langhoff who truly is one of the nicest opposing coaches we'll meet all season. I, like I said earlier, had a nice chat with him upon arrival from, I think it was watching one of his sons play a basketball game tonight. Um, but he was one of my first girls interviews uh, when he was back with Canton. He actually might have been my first girls interview. I'd have to think about that, but he might, well, Michi Edwards was. Pisha could have gotten an and one, but she'll take the bucket anyway. Make it 17-3, 3.05 until halftime. Wardle, good pass to the baseline. Is he trying to take the charge? They don't call it. Two is for Daly. And if this is the college level, they probably would have called the flopping warning on that, considering the fact that they didn't see enough to call a charge, and they probably would have called it a flop. Kicked ball, should be a kicked ball, but... They just say it deflects out of bounds, which doesn't really make a whole lot of difference because there's no shot clock to worry about resetting the shot clock. So forget everything I just said. <laughs> Russell with the baseline inbound. Tough pass, Wardle deflects it out. Brooklyn Marshall back in for Izzy Vandeschraff. And that's another thing that Lane Langholf was talking about is just how physical of a team Metamora is said Peoria High is probably the best team they've played all season, and rightfully so. Michi Edwards has the Lions atop the 3A poll. Um, but he said Metamora is definitely the most physical team we'll play all year. 2.30 until the half. Redbirds doubling up the Irish. Wardle might have something to say about that. She gives it back. Cook in the corner. Open three. Short rebound ramage. And back to Lollaman Deer, 2-12 to go until the break. Redbirds in control, but like I said, can't stop now. Pesha nearly traveled. In fact, I wouldn't have been surprised if they called it. Three for Ramage, short and left. Rebound Marshall. Lollaman Deer ripped away, and here comes Ricky. Ricky jump on Pesha, two rolls out. Rebound Kayla. Got to slow down, slow down, Kayla, slow down. <laughs> She can really get up and down the floor, but I don't know about in a four-on-one situation. Holloman Deer being fouled hard by Wardle, and they're not calling it. Maya tips the pass out of bounds. It'll stay Metamora ball. At some point, you do have to make sure you're judging that line fairly in terms of crossing the line between good defense and fouling. Wardle certainly one of the better defending guards in the area. You No doubt about that. Ooh, look at that. Pesha, two, oh, it rolls out. Batted away to Cook. Ricky open for three, good. 32-19, 120 until half. Irish show the light press. Well, and Deer on Wardle, good matchup all night. I'll say it once, I'll say it again. 13 point lead for Metamora. Russell driving. Spin back for Pesha, lost it. Stolen by Cook, get a stop here. Cook, I thought traveled, they might have said deflected, would have been the call. Hanley for three is good. 32-22, back to a 10 point game. One shot, it's a lot of time to hold for one shot. 40 seconds. Ramage at the right wing. That might have been the play call, because here's Brooklyn Marshall with a hook shot, no good. 30 seconds until the half. Ricky drives left side. That's three in the key. They missed that call. 20 seconds until the half. Which, and I, I think, Brad, you'll agree with me, if three second in the lane is the call we've been most worried about in the first half, so far, so good. 
Wordle, ooh, she wanted that three. Cook will take it instead, it's short. Rebound for Katie Ramage, got to throw it up. Three-quarter court prayer, hit the backboard, but wide left. Redbirds up double figures at the break, 32-22. We'll be back with halftime stats. Back here at the halftime for the first half stats, we start with the visiting and ninth ranked Fighting Irish. Their halftime stats look like this. Delaney Cook, one, two, two points. Molly Rickey, one foul, one, three, three points. Caitlin Cassidy, one, two, two points. Mary Breitbach, one, two, two points. Biz Daly, one, two, two points. Morton, by the way, not to interrupt my stance on a tape delay broadcast, but Morton's fairly in control of Dunlap, 31-14. Um, so unless the trajectory of that game changes, looks like, Dun um, looks like Morton will have a fairly comfortable win in that one. Um, but where were we? Breitbach, two fouls, one, two, two points. Biz Daly, one foul, one, two, two points. Maya Wardle, leading scorer for Notre Dame at the half, one foul, two twos, one three, one from one, one four, one from the line, eight points. And Elizabeth Hanley, one three, three points. Irish as a team, six twos, three threes, one of one from the line, five fouls, and 22 points. Halftime stats for your Redbirds. Izzy Vandertraff, one foul, one two, two points. Katie Lollamandir, 1 2, 2 of 2 from the line, 4 points. Alyssa Russell, 1 3, 3 points. Kayla Pesha has game honors right now. 6 twos, 1 of 1 from the line, 13 points. Katie Ramage, 1 2, 1 3, 1 of 1 from the line, 6 points. And Brooklyn Marshall, 2 twos, 2 points. Metamore as a team, 13 twos. Two threes, four of four from the free throw line, the one foul from Izzy Vandeschraff in the first half, and a total of 32 points. Quarter by, quarter by, I almost lost my spot board. Quarter by quarter, Metamore of 15-11 in the first, 17-11 in the second. Man, we're up double figures, but it sure doesn't feel like it. 32-22, gotta have a big third quarter here and hopefully be able to have a comfortable lead in the fourth because what we were doing there around early mid second quarter was about as good as you could ask but we got to go back to that not late second quarter where we kind of let Notre Dame back into the game to where we're at now early second quarter if that version of Metamora shows up in the second half we're in good shape but obviously Notre Dame's going to make some defensive changes at half you would think anyway um, particularly on Kayla Pesha um, allowing her to score 13 first half points um, in the East Peoria game, Pesha had 15 at the half. Bloomington was the last time she had less than double figures at half. And in fact, the Bloomington game at half, she was scoreless. Uh, so 32-22, Metamora, your lead at the half. Back with the second half. All righty, back at Tempke Gym, getting you ready for the start of the third quarter. Looks like. As of now, the arrow should favor Metamora, I thought. That's what it was ready, reading at halftime. It is given the Metamora on the scoreboard. Redbirds will send out their starting lineup. Lalleman, Deer, Russell, Pesha, Ramage, and Marshall. Notre Dame sends out Cook. Um, I see Breitbach, Wardle. See if Daly and Ricky are out there. There's Daly and there's Ricky. So yep, starters for both teams. First offensive possession of the second half. Redbirds trying to maintain that double-figure lead. They went on a 15-3 run to start the quarter. Then Notre Dame countered with an 8-2 run to get us to where we're at now. Dangerous pass. Turned over. Irish don't have numbers. They slow it down. Cook open. Ooh, surprised she didn't take that. 
Breitbach, baseline cut for Cook. No good, tips Marshall right to Ricky, but then gets into a jump ball with Ramage. And that'll be possession Notre Dame. Baseline inbound for Wardle, less than a minute into the third quarter. Gets it to Breitbach, and then she's got it back up at the point. Wardle, tough shot over Russell, no good. Rebound for Ramage. Wardle's got to be careful there. Haven't called the reach in yet, but you never know when they might start calling it. Russell travels on the baseline. Turnover to Notre Dame, 6.58 in the third quarter. Still sitting at our halftime score. Ricky cut by Wardle, passes deflected, but right to Delaney Cook. Shot is short, rebound and put back. Ooh, that could have been a foul on Kayla, no good. Put back third try for Biz Daly. And it's an eight point game with 6.30 to go in the quarter. Holloman, Beer, and Wardle going at it again. Katie traveled, turnover to Notre Dame. This is not the start to the third quarter we were wanting. Now, the comment I made off camera was we need the 15 3 Metamora, not the 8 2 Notre Dame version of Metamora. Ricky to Daly. Great cut by Cook. Interesting that they go with a quick pass back to the perimeter. Have to go back to the volleyball line roughly. Ooh, Katie almost ripped it away. That might be off. Ooh. A close call. I thought it might have been off Molly Ricky. They say it's still off the Redbird, so 557 in the quarter. Irish try to look a little get a little closer. Inbound is to Cook. Driving on Ramage, two is good. 32-26, 5.47 in the quarter, inbound to Marshall. Palman Deer drives, and they call a foul on that. That's an interesting call. Molly Ricky will pick up her second, team's first. And Katie Lollman Deer will shoot two. Six-point lead. By the way, Notre Dame 26 points. Only Springfield has met or eclipsed 30 points against the Redbirds this season, and that streak will likely fall tonight with the talented and obviously top 10 Irish. First free throw good for Katie. Second one, bounces around and in. Four made free throws on the game for Katie, eight point lead, 538 in the third. Watch the screen, good job by Katie. Effectively negates both of those attempted screens by the Irish. Cook has space at the elbow, but she turns it over. No, she doesn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> Katie's learned her lesson after the Bloomington game. <laughs> oh. Comes sprinting right away from that two hands up. I want no part of that. <laughs> Russell sideline inbound. Got to be careful. Got to get it in. Just throw it in. Inbound is to Pesha. Back to Lolliman Deer. I'm not sure what we were doing there. Turn over to Notre Dame. Ward will pull up short and left. Rebound for Marshall. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> that could have easily been a turnover. Get in the trap corner like that. Thankfully, we had numbers as a result. Watch the double team. Eight point lead, 440 in the third. Oh, Marshall on the baseline. Fights it away to Lolliman Deer. Down the 430. Nice cut, Brooklyn. 
Pacha baseline. Tough defense from Notre Dame. This has probably been one of the better defensive teams we've played all year. You could certainly present the argument for the best. Lollam and Deer almost travels. 4-10 in the quarter, trying to get back to a double-figure lead. Clock is our friend, obviously. Katie Ramage backing down. Nice move! Oh, she doesn't get the shot, though. Rebound for Notre Dame. Van de Schraff subs in next dead ball. Wardle. Oh, wow. Not a very big margin of error on that pass, but they work it to Biz Daly for two. Six point game, 340 in the third. Ballman here to Russell. Pacia waiting for the screen left. Listen to Brooklyn. Wide left, rebound tipped, Ryermage to Russell. 30 second timeout, Metamora with 322 in the third. And I think it's a 30, but I think they'll also be charged the mat. Yep. They'll also be charged with the mask timeout. Well, they'll be charged the 30, but they will also take the mask timeout. 322 in the third quarter, Metamora holding on to an eight point lead. All right, back here in Metamora, 322 in the third quarter. Not a stellar third quarter by any stretch of the imagination. Six points for the Irish as to just four for Metamora. So for the first time so far anyway, the Irish outscoring Metamora in a quarter. It was 15-11 in the first, 17-11 in the second in favor of the home team. They cut off the drive from Wardle. Open is Cassidy for two. 36-30. Three minutes to go in the third. Izzy Van de Schraff gets it across and drives. Lost it, but right to Katie Ramage. That was an answered prayer. 2.49 in the third. Don't want to get Notre Dame in the single possession game. We're not one team to run a crazy amount of clock unless we need to, but that's a turnover. Cassidy back to Wardle. Wide open Cassidy. No good, a rebound for Ramage. I don't know about a must score, but certainly wouldn't hurt. Ramage posting up. Backing down, double team, oh, Kayla lost it for a second. Risky pass and another turnover. Six point lead. Wardle, gotta be careful, Liz. They want to reach in. Driving is Wardle, and they say blocked out of bounds, and then lost by Maya Wardle. Okay, that, he can't make this call because he was nowhere near it. That is not his call. Not even his cylinder. By the book. No. Oh. It's not even in his cylinder. Elena Redgate for the first time today subs in and replaces Izzy, or uh, replaces Alyssa Russell. I'm not necessarily saying it was a good or bad call, but can't call, make a call from outside of your cylinder or for a play that's from outside your cylinder. Elizabeth Hamley in the game as well for the Irish. Cassidy, two is good and one. Foul is on Elena Redgate, her first, team's first, second of the game. And it's a four point game with Cassidy trying to attempt a three point play to make it the ever dreaded one possession game. This has been, eh, I don't know about dreaded, that might be a strong word, as the free throw is no good. Tipped by Cook, right to Cook. And the Irish could go for a twofer here. Wordle, pull up. Rolls in. 36-34 and an inbound violation back to Notre Dame. Yeah. 
Ricky in for Notre Dame, replacing Hanley. 121 in the third. Irish could take their first lead, I think, of the game. No, they were up 2 0, I think. But it would be their first lead since extremely early in the first quarter. No, oh, we can't bite on that. Ward will open. Three is good. One point lead for Notre Dame, 107 to go in the third quarter. Volunteer to Ramage. That, what are we doing? <laughs> Patient of Van de Schraff, our passing, we've gone right back to where we were earlier. The passing has just not been good these last couple possessions. Irish with the one point lead down the 42 seconds in the third. Ramage to Van de Schraff to Lallemandier. 35 seconds. Kyle Lineth walking towards the official. He might be wanting to call a timeout. That's a foul by Wardle. And that's definitely a foul by Ricky. Ramage in the corner. Down to 13 seconds. Ooh, Katie's got space. Flips it up and in. 38-37. Get a stop here, Birds. Down to five seconds. Wardle loses a player. Cook for three, and it's good. Dadgummit. Headed to the fourth quarter, Irish by two. Well, we're back for the fourth quarter, and let's just flush that third quarter out the door. And, <laughs> and basically, other than how it affects the score, act like it never even happened. Melissa Russell, Katie Lalleman Deer, Katie Ramage, Brooklyn Marshall, and Izzy Vandeschraff, the five to start the fourth. Irish in front, 40-38. Lolleman Deer to Vandeschraff. What are we, that, no. And then we have an injury timeout as Ricky went down to warrant the official timeout, but she's back up fairly quickly. 7.48 in the fourth quarter. 7.48 to go, Redbirds down two. Ricky inbounds to Wardle. to Cook at the free throw line. Blocked by, we'll say deflected by Marshall. I don't know about a full on block, but she definitely affected that. Ramage with it at the point. See if we can get the lead back. We'll take a two, obviously. There's still 7.23 in the fourth. Russell to Vandeschraff. Don't have that option. Yep, that's what happens. Yeah, we luck out there to flank it off Notre Dame. So it'll be a near baseline inbound for the Redbirds. See if we can capitalize on a little miniature gift. Got to get it in. Turnover right to Maya Wardle, and then down goes Ricky. She slipped. <laughs> Notre Dame finding a way to complain about it being a trip, but Ricky slipped. Inbound is to Lalleman Deer. Down two, one minute into the fourth quarter. Gotta watch the double team there on the screen. We do. Rambage to Marshall. Ooh, Russell. Got some space up top. Nope, not there. 6.35 to go. Clock not our friend like it was earlier. And a foul on Notre Dame. 20 on Biz, or number 20, Biz Daly picks up her second. Kayla Pesha back in. For Katie Ramage. 6.27 in the fourth quarter and a two point lead for the Redbirds. 
or for the Irish, rather. Russell on the inbound. We gotta move, ladies. Gotta get it in, come on! You know you have five seconds. You gotta either move more or at that point you'll just take the throw in. Gotta have more off ball movement. And Notre Dame gets a timeout. 30 second timeout with 6.15 to go. And obviously this game lies in their favor at the moment, not just in terms of the score, but in terms of the overall vibe of the game. Man, I know it's just one turnover, but this team has too much maturity to do something like inbound, viol or inbound violation type of things. I was just texting someone talking about how good this team is compared to teams of the past. Now it is pretty early, but obviously a 7-0 start. They're up there as among the best, at least in the time I've been with the team. Wardle inbound to Cook. Why did we give her the baseline? Hanley to Cook, open three. Rebound tips to Daly, or yeah. And double team in the corner, and I think Alyssa might be out of bounds. Yep. Katie Ramage back in for Brooklyn Marshall. Cook handoff to Wardle. Ricky, driving, open baseline Hanley. So many open opportunities for Notre Dame. The defense, I won't say nowhere to be found, but it's certainly fallen off since the start of the game. Russell to Vandeschramp. Back up to Lolleman Deer, 5.23 to go. We gotta move, ladies. This isn't movement. Russell up top. 5.04 to go. We're wasting a lot of clock for a team down four. Pesha almost lost it. Deflected out of bounds. It'll stay. No, they say it was saved in bounds, and here come the Irish. Metamora wants a timeout, and they get it. Full timeout with 4.35 to go. And a 44-38 lead. Bank and Metamora, 4.35 to go in the fourth quarter. Irish up six. Said don't stop now, and afraid we might have stopped. Literally have not scored in nearly four minutes. Redbird sideline inbound. Russell will take it. Holloman Deer. Deflected. Gonna get a jump ball, possession Notre Dame. Gotta be better. That side, of the, that side of the lane cut has worked so many times, it just wasn't there that possession, and we tried to make it, and it technically did result in a turnover. Pass was too hard for Ricky. Out of bounds to Metamora. 
Plenty of ground to make up. Got to watch Hanley intruding the boundary limits. Russell inbound to Pesha. To Russell. Should be barring anything crazy. Mass timeout, next dead ball. We're letting too much clock run. This offense has been way too stagnant to want to get a win in the second half. And another silly turnover. Wardle and Russell, 3.40 to go. And off to Cook. Wide open, Hanley. 46-38. Well, Deer driving, could have called the travel there potentially. It would have been a tough call. Cross court pass, Pesha. And they call a blocking foul on Notre Dame. Wow. Charge it to Biz Daly. That's her third, team's third. And it'll be a baseline inbound for Alyssa Russell. Got to get it in. Got to get it in. Deflected out, and it'll stay our ball. Mass timeout. 3.10 to go. Irish by eight. Back at Tempke Gym, 3.10 to go. Redbirds have fallen off here in the second half. They've scored six points since the start of the third quarter. Six. Russell with the sideline inbound to Vandeschraff. Katie Lalleman Deer. Katie Ramage at the wing. Cut out by Russell. Gotta move. It's gonna be one of the first things I asked Kyle Wyneth in the post game show, win or lose, is just how stagnant this offense has been in the second half. Ramage backing down on Cook, spin move, hard contact, no good, rebound for Daly. And she's too worried about the call instead of running up the floor. That can cost you sometimes. She's lucky Ward will slow it down for her. That's why they always tell you, next play. Wardle ripped away. It's in the hands of Katie Lollamandeer, who almost lost it herself. Kayla Pesha contact, and she'll shoot. <laughs> Foul is on Delaney Cook, her first team's fourth, and Kayla Pesha <sighs> will have a chance to make this a little more interesting. Um, yeah, two shots for her. First one is no good. Just the second free throw she's missed to this early point of the season. Yeah, she does make the second one at least. Seven point game, 2.10 to go. Gotta go, speaking of which. Turned over and foul. Yep, that's a bear hug from Molly Ricky, her third. Team's fifth. And Notre Dame's going to call a full timeout with 2.07 to go. We'll keep it right here um, and see how things develop here in the latter minutes. Again, Metamora, the one free throw from Kayla Pesha, all they've had to say in the fourth quarter. Notre Dame, albeit they're on a 6 1 run to start the quarter. But they haven't been doing stellar themselves here in the fourth. Elizabeth Hanley with four, Delaney Cook with two. That's it for Notre Dame in the fourth quarter. So, yeah, if you like offense, this fourth quarter hasn't been for you. Uh, but particularly the second half as a whole for Metamore, if you do expand it to that. Let's see here, six. So it'll be 24 to seven Notre Dame in the second half to get to a seven point Irish lead. Now, I haven't used this phrase in a while, 
Um, but sometimes when we get to these kind of game situations, they like to say this two minutes and seven seconds is going to feel a lot more like two hours and seven minutes instead of the other units. Redbird inbound, 2.07 to go. Holloman Deer, need a comeback. Left wing is Ramage for Vandeschrank. Holloman Deer at the right wing. Pesha muscles it up and will shoot. And very important, we're now in the bonus the rest of the way. Kayla Pesha will shoot and Biz Daly just picked up her fourth foul. Pesha, uh, one of two just moments ago. <sighs> Gets the shooter's roll that time. Six point deficit with 1.54 to go. Second free throw for KP, also good. Five point game with 1.54 to go. Careful on the defense. Want to be aggressive, but not too aggressive. Got time before we need to foul. Or I guess we could do that, whatever. <laughs> Alyssa Russell, her first team second, third of the game. Good thing is we do have the fouls to spare, considering like I just mentioned, we've only been called for three all game. Sideline inbound for Ward. We've got to be careful with this bunch set. Patient tips it out. 102 seconds to go to make up a five point deficit. Side baseline inbound for Ricky and a foul on Pesha. Her first team's third. I really hope we're not trying to intentionally foul. Not yet anyway. Inbound for Ricky. To Cook. Right to Izzy Vandestraff. Got to capitalize on this. Down five, 133 to go. Pesha. Oh, oh, ho, 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 ho. praise heavens. <laughs> One in bonus. One in bonus. One in bonus after the foul on Molly Ricky. Kayla Pesha will shoot. Come on, KP. Good. Kayla, with one more free throw, can make it a one score game with 90 seconds to go. Got it. 46 43, 130 on the clock. Biggest defensive possession of the game. Cook. Hooking foul on Ramage. Uh, offensive, yeah, there we go. I knew that's what the call was. Delaney Cook had her arm all the way around Katie Ramage's back. Great call there. And hallelujah, that's the first time I've seen hooking called at this level in years. That might be the best and most intricate call these officials have made all game. Russell, now we gotta capitalize on it. That's another story. Inbound to Pesha. Lollum and Deer, 124 to go. Got to move, ladies. 120 to go, three-point deficit driving on Wardle. Vandestraff, bad pass. Jump ball, arrow to Metamora. 114 to go. Metamora in the bonus. They no longer have the arrow. Redbirds have three timeouts left. The Irish have two. Here's Russell. Got to get it in. Oh, get to that, Katie, get to that. Okay. 1.10 to go, down three. Got to get away from that half-court stripe. 
Katie Ramage to Kayla Pesha. Lost it out of bounds. Oh, hold on, we got a tip from the other side. Outside official calls tip and Metamora ball. Three point deficit with 58 four to go. Back to back gifts by the officials. Will we capitalize on this one? Russell got to get it in. We've come, we've gotten one turnover and come close to a couple others. More off ball movement, more off ball movement under a minute down three. As he runs baseline, Kayla. Two is good, one point game. Who called time? I think we did. Full timeout, Metamora with 42 six to go. Well, we obviously, I'd hate to say it, if, if your heart health isn't the best, stop watching this 42.6 seconds. But I would say we get a stop, then we gotta hold for the win, unless Notre Dame fouls us, which I don't know why they would foul us when we're in the bonus and down. So my point, that furthers my point that this next offensive possession is gonna be for the win. Six forty-five, forty-two point six to go. It'll be Elizabeth Hanley for Notre Dame. Biggest defensive possession, even more so now. Hanley to Wardle, deflected back to Hanley. Clamp down, ladies, get this stop. Thirty-five seconds. Wardle wild pass out of bounds. The Irish gift Metamora a turnover. And ooh, Notre Dame wanted to get that timeout in, but they inbounded the ball already. 25 seconds to go. Ramage to Vandeschraff, 20 seconds. Lalaman Deer, Pesha, backs down. Got to get out of that. Lalaman Deer ripped away from behind. Timeout, Notre Dame. Full timeout, Irish. Full timeout, Irish with 11 and a half to go. So the Irish have one timeout left and the arrow. We're in the bonus. We have two timeouts left. But when you look at the game reset, the ball is in Notre Dame's court. It's their game to lose. Conversely, our game to win. See what Kyle Wyneth might have drawn up here. I believe we did have one buzzer beater win last year against, was that was Canton last year or two years ago? Two years ago. Okay, so I think that's our most recent buzzer beater. Um, we did lose to Springfield that same season on a buzzer beater as well. Elizabeth Hanley sideline inbound. Now what? Okay, they're just confirming the timeout situation. Notre Dame bunched up along with the Redbirds at the free throw line. Hanley, got to get it in. She does to Wardle, got a foul. Russell's fouling. Only, or we still got two fouls to give before it's bonus. So we got to move on this foul, on these foul counts. Hanley will try again. And, well, that's even better. 
15. Oh, it's on Russell. Her third, team's fifth. Two more fouls, ladies. Let's get it. There it is. Ramage. Her first, team sixth. Now we need to foul right away. Got to play closer, get contact right away. Oh, we'll take that. I think, I thought, well, it's Notre Dame ball. That doesn't do us any good. Notre Dame will call their final timeout, which should be a full with 4.2 to go. Well, if the Redbirds do fall, it's their first loss of the season. And I mean, let's be frank, as, as highly optimistic as we are about the state of this program, it's not like we were gonna go undefeated. This certainly would be a very reputable loss I don't think it'll completely bump us out of the pole considering it's a top 10 game. We might bump down a spot or two, but especially with how competitive of a game it's been here in the second half. You could argue, depending on what the other eight teams do, well, Peoria High did lose, so that's gonna cause a little bit of a shakeup. But you could argue that regardless of the result of the game, these two teams will stay at six and nine, respectively, Metamore and Notre Dame. All right, let's get the foul. Russell, foul. And there's the bonus. Redbirds will have 3.2 to win it. Maya Wardle, one in the bonus. Do you intentionally miss in this situation? Wardle. No good, rebound Metamora, and we get a timeout. Is it a full or a 30? Full timeout with 2.1 to go. Well, We'll see, we will see. 2.1 seconds. You do have a timeout and we should have the arrow as we do. We do have the arrow on the table, they haven't switched it on the board, but we do have the arrow. Both teams in the bonus. The benefit Obviously, it won't really matter now. Notre Dame doesn't have the ball, but they are out of timeouts. So, the biggest play of the game coming up. About the worst part about this is we have to go length of the floor. Redbirds need a miracle. What are we doing? And just as we anticipated, the stagnant offense comes back to bite the Redbirds one more time. The winning streak is over, and the Redbirds head to the loss column for the first time this season. We'll be back with head coach Kyle Lyoneth. Back here post game with head coach Kyle Lyoneth and well, Coach, let's get perhaps the worst question out of the way. The offense, I'd hate to be so blunt, but seemed incredibly stagnant after that hot start. What do you see? Yeah, you know, um, I'm sure they tried to make a few adjustments on their end. Um, but, uh, you know, we've, we've got to do a little bit better job on uh, our, end of, our end of things. Uh, that starts with, with us coaches and trying to provide 
easier opportunities to get a bucket. We went on a pretty good stretch there where uh, it looked like, um, you know, we were, we were making offense look like one of the hardest things in the world. And uh, so we got to watch a little film on that. And uh, we'll be right back to work at it tomorrow and try to get some things fixed for Thursday. Well, we, we do want to turn there. Certainly, I think, were some positives. I think you look at that 15-3 run you guys made on Notre Dame. What was working so well during that stretch of the game? You know, we got out in transition a little bit during that time, uh, and we, we were playing a lot of confidence. Um, and, uh, you know, it, basketball is a game of runs. Uh, and we, we talked about it the last few days, uh, and not just for this game, but really any game. Um, you know, we're going to make some runs. The other team's going to make some runs. Uh, you know, you just always hope that you got to – you got a fighting chance to be in there, and I think in the pregame we talked about, you know what, we're going to try to defend as best we can. We're going to try to give ourselves a chance, and, uh, you know, the outcome wasn't uh, exactly what we desired tonight, um, you know, as a team and as a coaching staff, but uh, we gave ourselves a chance right up to the very end, um, you know, and uh, yeah, just one of those deals where uh, they, they had a pretty good spurt there, I think, to close out the second quarter that carried into the third quarter. Yeah, 8 And they kind of flipped the script on us in the third quarter, which, you know, up to this point, our, we've been pretty solid in third quarter uh, defensively, and uh, and they kind of continued their run during that time. And we, uh, you know, it, it, and some of it was uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, breakdowns on our end, and, and we gave them a few easy ones. And uh, at the same time, we, we didn't have too many uh, easy looks at it, so. Well, obviously, this has been an incredible start to the season, and I think we knew at some point that that first loss was going to eventually come. But I want to ask you more generally, though, obviously, first-year head coach, what, what goes into addressing a losing locker room, especially when it's your first loss of the year after such a great start? <laughs> that's, a, that's a deep question. <laughs> you know, we, we, we try not to make any game, you know, that much bigger than another one. And so we've, we've took in, taken the approach, uh, you know, it's just one game at a time. And so this was the eighth game on our schedule. We were trying to win it tonight, um, you know, but it, it stinks when you go in there. It's one of the worst things to do. You know, everybody likes to talk to uh, to a team after they win, um, you know, but I just reminded them, hey, you know, the we're not turning in gear today. This isn't the where the season stops, uh, you know, got off to a good start, um, you know, and, you uh, we got exposed in some areas that we got to do better, and so as coaches, we got to have a better plan uh, in place. We got to we got to prepare ourselves better in practice, uh, you know, to try to try to fix some of those things. But uh, you know, that was really the conversation was, hey, you know what? Um, don't let one loss turn into another, um, you know. And uh, so we get a, a chance on Thursday. The nice thing about basketball is you get uh, a lot of times a quick turnaround time, and so uh, we'll have another crack at it on Thursday to try to right the ship. Let's talk um, briefly, like you said, about where you go from here because um, I, I don't always like to pull from rival um, lesson plans, if you will, but um, one of our interconference coaches I had quoted as saying a loss isn't necessarily a loss if you don't learn from it. What, what are your thoughts on that quote and how you may try to um, kind of encompass that heading into limestone on Thursday? Yeah, you, you know, I think there's a lot to be said there. You know, you, you like to uh, you like to l learn from any game. Uh, it's a lot more fun to learn from them when you're winning them. Um, you know, and I, I don't think that uh, because we won some games that uh, that we collectively as a group had said, you know what, uh, we're not in a position to get any better. These kids have been bringing it every day in practice, and I thought we had some of the best preparation um, that we've had of the season, um, you know, Friday, Saturday, and, and Monday leading into this thing. Um, you know, and it, 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 it'll be no different. I know this group, uh, I know our coaches, and uh, so we'll rally around it. But, uh, but you're right, you know, sometimes it gives you a chance to refocus a little bit and say, hey, you know what, uh, this didn't quite work. You know, what, what can we try to do to, to be a little bit better? And uh, it starts with us coaches. Well, Coach, obviously tough one tonight, but hopefully we'll be able to turn the page and we'll talk to you pregame on Thursday. Sounds good. Thanks, Alex. All right, thanks for the time. All right, back here as we get ready to ramp up from Tepke Gym, um, take you through end of the game stats. Um, first for the victorious Irish. Um, sorry, I'm fielding a couple score-asking texts. Um, but the Irish go like this. Delaney Cook... Uh, three twos, one three, two fouls, and nine points. Uh, Molly Ricky, four fouls, one three, three points. Caitlin Cassidy, three twos, oh of one from the line, six points. Mary Breitbach, two fouls, one two, two points. Biz Daly, four fouls, three twos, six points. Lexi Gorham, 
uh, played the first and second quarter but did not accumulate scorebook stats. Maya Wardle, the team's leading scorer, um, her dad's Bradley Braves lost to Toledo tonight by one point, I think. Let me pull it up here. Yeah, or lost by two. Toledo 67, Bradley 65. Um, so, yeah, interesting game there, I would think. I think that was in Toledo. I don't think that was in Peoria. Anyway, um, so Maya Wardle, one foul, three twos, two threes, one of two from the line, 13 points. To this point of the season, easily the best opposing defender we've seen. Um, we'll see if that changes between now and the end of the season, but through the first eight games, easily the toughest defender um, we've had all season. Um, let's see, Elizabeth Hanley, uh, two twos, one three, and seven points. Irish as a team, 15 twos, five threes. I mentioned off camera with Coach Wyaneth just before we got recording these end of the game stats. Irish only go one of three from the three throw, free throw line, committing 13 fouls and scoring 46 points. The final statistics for your Redbirds are as follows Is Evander Schraff, one foul, one two, two points. Katie Lollamandir, one two, four of four from the line, six points. Alyssa Russell, four fouls, one, two, one, three, five points. Kayla Pesha takes game honors with, I want to say, her third, maybe fourth career 20-point game. Uh, one foul, seven twos, six of seven from the free throw line, 20 points. Katie Ramage, one foul, two twos, one three, one of one from the line, eight points. Brooklyn Marshall, two twos, four points. And then Elena Redgate, one foul. Redbirds as a team, 14 twos, two threes. They took advantage of the free throw line, going 11 of 12, committing only eight fouls over the course of the game and scoring 45 points. Quarter by quarter, something Coach Wyneth talked about in the postgame show, and we kind of elaborated on that um, post-recording of the interview. Um, first quarter, 15-11 Metamora. The second was 17-11 Metamora. Then it fell off, at least for the third. 18-6 Notre Dame. You could argue, or maybe not even need to argue, that was the difference in this ball game. An 18-6 third quarter from the Irish, um, paced by five points apiece from Delaney Cook and Maya Wardle. Um, but 18-6 Notre Dame in the third quarter. The Redbirds did outscore Notre Dame in the fourth, 7-6. Um, all those fourth quarter points coming from Kayla Pesha on the strength of five free throws and a two-pointer. So, yeah, took one on the chin. Not our best offensive performance, especially in the second half. Um, one thing I was mentioning with Coach Wyaneth, um off camera, but it is my thought, and I feel like I can mention it on air. Um, you know, the Bradley women who, if you, for those of you that may not know me as well, I'm the public address announcer for. Um, they had a tough loss at South Dakota last night in which they only scored 39 points. Um, and of the four quarters, two of them were in single digits. Um, and I had texted a family member saying that, well, the odds obviously aren't too often in your favor when half of your quarters in the game are in single digits. And obviously Metamora does that tonight, actually exactly to the T that the Bradley women had last night, um, six in the first and seven in the second. And obviously, like I said, two single-digit scoring quarters is not going to win you too many ball games at any level um, of the sport. And that kind of bit the Redbirds tonight. Like I said, the stagnant offense in the second half. Um, but despite that, they still had a chance. You know, Coach Wyaneth talking about how things were defensively in the third and fourth quarters kept them in the game somewhat. Um, but in the end, blowing, well, I don't know if you can say blowing, because the 20-point lead was all the way back in, like, the second quarter. Um, but still, you look at it, and that kind of hurts. Um, and you see as up as they were, um, and Notre Dame coming back. But Coach Wyneth did mention, if Notre Dame can do it to number one Peoria High, albeit the Irish ended up losing that game, but if the Irish can make a com similar point spread comeback against the number one team in the state who by the way just lost um yesterday or saturday to um shoot uh nazareth academy um down down at the o'fallon shootout um but if they can make the comeback against number one peoria high what says they can't do it against number six metamora um, and obviously they were able to do that tonight we had a chance um but you know woulda coulda shoulda had we probably had that last play 
um, as a sideline inbound instead of a baseline inbound far side. Probably would have had a drastically better chance at that last shot, but when you only have 2.1 seconds to go the length of the floor, the odds are far from in your favor. So I want to thank Coach Wyneth for the time pre- and post-game, and tough one for the Redbirds tonight falling into the loss column for the first time this season. Having their seven-game win streak snapped, they're now 7-1, and one, heading into our next broadcast on Redbird Replay Thursday against the Limestone Rockets at 7 o'clock. Well, like I said, thanks to Coach Wyneth for the time pre- and post-game. This has been a presentation of Metamora Girls Basketball on MTCO. I'm Alex Dobb. Thanks for watching Redbird Replay.